This tutorial is the third in RDX7 phase modulation series. In the last tutorial, we created six phase modulation oscillators and created a system to send messages to them. The oscillators were arranged in the formation of DX7 algorithm number one. The DX7 has 31 other algorithms though, so how do we change our oscillator routines dynamically? We can replace our patch cable connections with a network of send and receive objects. Each oscillator has its own send name and receive name. Note that these are audio sends and receives. The six oscillators are only connected to these sends and receives. Watch out for getting your send and receive names right. We've cocked up oscillator 5 here, but we fixed it at some point. Learn from our mistakes. One final addition is a mask to receive for the actual audio output, so that we can route each oscillator not only to each other oscillator, but also to the audio output. We can now create a routing patch that lets us control how much of each oscillator is sent to every other. This means that each of the six inputs must each be able to connect to each of the six outputs. At the top of the routing patch are the six received from the oscillator outputs. At the bottom are the six sends to the oscillator inputs. We also have a send for the master output. Let's first look at the output from oscillator 1. We want to be able to control the volume of this oscillator to any of the seven outputs. In the sub patch, we create a multiply box and an audio outlet. A receiver is added to the right side of the multiply with a name that indicates the mapping it is controlling. The first number represents the oscillator output coming in the inlet, one in this case. The second number is the number of the oscillator that this is routed to. So in this sub patch we have 1 1, 1 2, 1 3, 1 4, 1 5, 1 6, and finally 1 out. The outlets from the sub patch connect to the seven sends at the bottom of the patch. One of these sub patches is needed for each of the receive objects, with the numbers updated accordingly in the receive objects. This takes a little bit of time. There are faster ways to dynamically set up the receive objects, but this is a bit more simple for the moment, even if it is a bit time consuming. Make sure you double check all of your received names afterwards. One more addition to these routing patches is the feedback control. 
Each of the oscillators can censor itself, but we want to externally control the level of this feedback with a single control. So this extra multiply box and receive object are added to each of the links between the oscillators output and inlet for 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, and so on. We can then add master feedback controller to the main patch. We can now think about how to actually assign these routings. We have all the receives in place, now we need sense. We will use a single number to set the DX7 algorithm from 1 to 32. We can use select to trigger the relevant messages for each algorithm. This could get very long-winded so we want the message format to be quite simple, so that creating 32 of them isn't too difficult. A message format for a routing will be OSC sender, OSC receiver, on or off. So 211 means turn on the connection from oscillator 2 to oscillator 1. 210 means turn off the connection. We can convert these numbers into send and receive messages by making good use of the make file name object and a send object with no default send name. We do two things here. First we we'll use the first two numbers to set the send name. We do this with two make file name objects where the first one sets the second one. See the make file name help patch for more on exactly how this works, particularly the sub patch titled multiple substitutions. We can then send a third piece of information, the actual will send level, to this newly named send object. We made a little mistake there. Make sure your make file name object looks like this with R percent percent D percent D. Simple really. Finally, we can tidy this up into a neat sub patch so that it doesn't hurt our head anymore. We need to do something similar for the sends to the audio outputs which are in the format R1 out, R2 out, etc. We can again do this using a make file name object to fill in the oscillator number for the send name. Finally, we can tidy this up into a neat sub patch.
we can now set up our routing messages to recreate the DX7 routing algorithm number one. This is the algorithm that we had hardwired at the start of this tutorial. 2 goes to 1, 6 goes to 5, 5 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3, 1 and 3 go to the output. Additionally, 6 feeds back on itself. It is useful to have a reset event that turns off all the connections between all the oscillators and outputs so that we don't get everything all jumbled up when we change presets. So each time we call a preset, we will remove all connections, then adjust the connections that we need. The reset messages just involve individually setting the connections to zero like this. Again, it's all a bit time consuming. That should be enough to actually test algorithm 1. Send algorithm number 1 to the subpatch and try sending notes. Note that in the transition from the last tutorial to this tutorial we have summary named our ask messages received. It now has an S on the end. OSCMSGS. Make sure your sends and receives are consistent. Let's try some other algorithms from the DX7. Algorithm 2 is just algorithm 1 with the feedback oscillator changed to number 2. So we change the 661 to a 221 message. Algorithm 3 is a little different. Note that our output oscillators are now 1 and 4 and not 1 and 3. Three goes to two and two goes to one. Six goes to five goes to four. Six is the feedback. Algorithm four is log algorithm three, but again, the feedback is changed. We won't do all 32 here, but you can do this yourself, or steal the sub-patch from our example in the patch downloads. The interface from the last tutorial should still work nicely with this.
the final tutorial, we will look at making Austin polyphonic and at making a nature interface for it. Goodbye.